ahead. Thank you, Jen. Uh, Democratic Congresswoman Cori Bush is saying that she favors spending tens of thousands on private security to keep her safe, and that people should, quote, suck it up, defunding the police has to happen. Didn't President Biden say a few weeks ago that anybody who accuses the party of being anti-police is lying? Well, I think we shouldn't lose the forest through the trees here, which is that a member of Congress, an elected official, is concerned that her life is threatened, and that's disturbing that any elected official would have to suffer death threats and fear for their life. So I'm not going to comment, of course, on their security arrangements. I don't have any more details on that. Uh, but I think we should start with that point first. I will say uh, that the President has been crystal clear that he opposes defunding the police. Uh, he has said that throughout the cam his campaign for office. His record over the last several decades has made that clear. He has proposed increased funding for law enforcement and the COPS program, increased funding from his predecessor, who was, as you might note or be aware of, a Republican. So I'd note that his record is pretty clear on this. There may be some in the Democratic Party, including Congresswoman Bush, who disagree with him. That's okay. But I would say the majority uh, of Democrats, we've seen this in polling, and the majority of members uh, also uh, agree that we should not defund the police. Is there a greater concern, though, I understand that's not the President's position, but is there a concern uh, that defunding the police or uh, suck it up, defunding the police has to happen might become uh, a big Democratic message ahead of the midterms? It does not appear to become uh, be, be becoming a Democratic message, even though there might be a desire for that on the other side of the aisle. Okay, and that there are reports the administration wants to require all foreign visitors to be vaccinated. Would that include migrants arriving in Texas and Arizona and being released into border towns? Well, I know there were a range of reports about this, so let me just give you a little bit of an update on this. One moment. And I know you asked kind of two questions there, and I promise I'll address them both. Uh, we, one, let me reiterate, and I know Francesca asked a question about this the other day, um, the importance of international travel. Um, given where we are today with the Delta variant, we will uh, plan to maintain existing travel restrictions at this point. Uh, however, what our interagency working groups are focused on, and this is, I think, what was reported, uh, is uh, working to develop a plan for a consistent and safe international travel policy. And that will be done through the prism of uh, providing consistent guidance, equitable guidance, digestible guidance. And there's a lot of confusion about what the restrictions are now. And you all have asked a lot of good questions about it because it feels inconsistent, and it is. Um, but that's what our focus is. So that uh, is, is certainly under strong consideration, but it is under a, uh, a policy process review right now that I won't uh, get ahead of myself. Uh, as it relates to, I know there was also reporting about the vaccination of uh, migrants. That's not what the CBP is doing. There are NGOs and other international uh, organizations who are vaccinating uh, migrants uh, as they come across the border and as they work in partnership with us. Certainly that helps keep a range of people safe in the com in the country. But do you think that it's keeping people safe from McAllen, Texas, where 7,000 confirmed COVID positive migrants have been released into the city since February, 1,500 in the last seven days? Well, I think it's important to note what's actually happening in McAllen. So there's actually been uh, a, they signed a disaster declaration and approved setting up a temporary emergency shelter to provide a space to create an isolated space to mitigate uh, this issue. And what happens is uh, DHS, and this is the process of what happens, uh, the agency, one, we're continuing to enforce Title 42, uh, resulting first in the expulsion of the vast majority of those encountered at the border. Uh, we also, uh, CBP also provides migrants who can't be expelled under Title 42 uh, with PPE. They're required to wear the PPE. If any exhibit signs of illness in CP, C, CBP uh, custody, they're referred to local health systems for appropriate testing, diagnosis, isolation, and treatment. And obviously, there are steps taken as needed, as this is uh, certainly evidence of. And I think we got to keep okay. chugging here just because uh, I don't want to run out of time. Kelly, go ahead. All right, folks, thank you so much for joining us here at Golden State Times. If you're new to the channel, we encourage you to subscribe by clicking that middle button. Also, check out our previous video by clicking the video on the right or a video you might enjoy by clicking the video on the left. Also, don't forget to click the thumbs up button and share this video on social media. Peace.